Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, Painter Master, and I'd like to introduce you to the new, the new brush pack for Painter Essentials called Shades of Grey. We're going to be using this brush set to create the painting Shades of Grey by Bob Ross, and I think you'll really enjoy this process and have some fun with these new brushes. So let's get started. We're going to begin by creating our canvas and we're going to start off by choosing File and New. We're going to set this to inches and you can do that by selecting the drop down if it is, select, if it is uh, on pixels, change it to inches and our file size is going to be, our canvas size is going to be 17 by 11 at 150 ppi and everything else is good there. Um, I might mention here that if you enjoy a certain orientation of canvas in terms of size and you feel it's something that you'll use over and over again, then it's a good idea to save that as a preset. So we'll select this Bob Ross canvas and all we need to do is save that and we're going to give it a name and we'll call the preset Bob Ross Canvas and then save it. And now if the next time I open up Painter uh, Essentials and I need a particular canvas size then all I have to do is look at the drop down here select the Bob Ross Canvas and I'm good to go and I can get started. We always tend to begin by toning our canvas and in this particular um, tutorial we're going to be working in grayscale. Grayscale is a great way to work because it gives us that opportunity to really evaluate tone and value within our painting. It helps to give the three-dimensionality quality to our painting and makes things appear further or closer to us. So we're going to be working with a very limited palette and for that reason um, it's a good idea to open your mixer pad and perhaps just pick some colors that you might want to use in this particular painting and um, I tend to like um, maybe using some of the blue tones and I'm going to show you another way that you can bring this all into uh, all into harmony at the end of the painting too. So get yourself a good variety of values from dark to mid to light and work with those throughout the painting uh, going forward. For my background fill and to fill the canvas <clears throat> and to get it ready for painting, I'm going to choose this lighter value here. If you're using your color set, um, a good choice would be uh, the pewter or the silver, and those would be two options that you could use. Um, if you want to stay more on the blue tones and work with different values, more of that monochromatic within the blue tones, then pick one of your uh, cobalt blues or cerulean blues, but go to a little lighter value of that, closer to that uh, silver tone. So you'd want to be in that area. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and choose and Command F or Control F will fill the canvas with the color. And I also have the opportunity to bring the opacity down if I want that down a little bit further. And I'm going to do that. So I'm going to select OK. And now I'm ready to start my painting. I think it's most important in this process that you do and enjoy those brushes and do what you feel uh, is expressing um, yourself in the painting. So follow along with me, but feel free to uh, add additional trees or more mountains or more clouds, however you would like to approach this painting. Just have a lot of fun with it. And we're going to start from the back and work forward. And we're, we're going to begin by choosing our Shades of Grey brush category. 
and we'll use the brush called Soft Cloud. And this is the first brush we're going to use to start building in a little bit of the background. And I'm going to start by choosing a darker value here because I want um, some, I want to actually use this darker value to build the clouds within the painting. So I'm going to start at the edges and just do some very soft uh, brush work and maybe change the brush size a little bit. And you can see that as I actually work with this brush, I'm actually forming the shape of clouds up in the sky. Now, you have an opacity slider here, and you can certainly use that if you've got, if you want to bring the opacity down on the brush, if it's a little bit too dark for you, um, feel free to do that. It's a good way to control some of the aspects in the painting. If you use your Alt key, you can sample color too. And a lot of times I'll go back over some of these darker values. But I, I really prefer to have these dark edges up in the corners because this helps to really um, give those clouds a little extra dimension within the painting. And we'll just soften kind of those edges a little bit. And this painting is a, has a lot to do with, um, you know, the mountains and the, the lake. So we'll keep the sky relatively simple, relatively soft. The next brush we're going to use is the Majestic Mountain brush. And we're going to use this to create our, brush, our uh, first level of mountains here. Now, you can do this on a new layer if you prefer, or you can paint directly on the canvas layer. It's really up to you. And we're going to start off with Majestic Mountain. And all you need to do here is find the location where you want to start your first mountain. And you're just going to do these a quick up stroke and then a down stroke an upstroke and then a downstroke. And don't be shy about putting some firm pressure on this brush because we really want to create some nice texture within this mountain uh, to get started with. And you can see that I'm just, you know, really putting some pressure onto this. And um, unlike Painter, where we have that opportunity to work a lot with texture, we're a little bit limited in essentials. But there's certain brushes that we'll go on to use here where we'll really create some, some nice effect here with your mountains. So really just an upward stroke, then down, up, and then down, and then up, and then down. And, and you've created about you know three good sized mountains here. Use your Alt key again to sample some other colors. And maybe have, we'll put in another little smaller mountain range right below this. And don't worry about your edges because we're going to get to that next. And maybe another smaller mountain right along this area. And if you want to have a little bit of snow up on the tops of those mountains, then use the uh, use a lighter value of that color and just dig into it and put decide what side of the mountain is going to have your snow on it and just go ahead and place snow on the mountain. And I'll pick a little darker value here and go over the back side of our mountain. And this is the shadow part of the mountain. So you can see it's starting to take some form here. And we'll put shadow on this side of the mountain. And we'll just let that edge go right down to the side here. And again, don't worry about those edges because the next brush we choose, we're going to soften some edges and really create a beautiful mountain range.
I like to take a little bit of this darker value and use it to just kind of dig in. And I'm using this brush kind of on the soft side now, not a lot of pressure. And we're using it just to create some, you know, little effects of rocks and craggy areas up at the tops of the mountains. So you can spend a little time with this. texture you get into this the better I think when you start doing your actual blending create these nice levels of different mountains along here okay then the next brush we're going to select here is called the snowdrifts blender and with this brush, what I want you to do is kind of an upward motion and then back and then pull the value or pull this darker value right down just so you're creating a nice soft flowing edge. And do that also on your mountain here very softly though. You want to keep some of that nice strong um, texture up towards the tops of the mountains. I always, I kind of like to maybe let a little of this flow out just to show maybe blowing snow or weather conditions up on the mountain. So again, just soft pressure and just pull those edges right down. The soft cloud brush can be used again and you can sample the lighter value and then give the indication of maybe some clouds going a truck across the tops of the mountains. This gives you a little more uh, atmospheric conditions. And then towards the end of your painting, you can always go back in and do some additional um, detail work on your mountains, add some more texture, you know, wherever you want to take it. For the fine detail work towards the end of your painting process and if you want to go back in and do a little more painting on your mountains, I like using the frozen lake brush and then use it at a relatively small size so you can go back in and do um, some fine detail work on your mountains. You know, If you need to strengthen the values in certain spots. Um, this would be a great brush to work with. So we're going to continue now by putting in our, our basic horizon here. And a, a real quick way to do it is to just simply go at the base of the mountain and run it across. If you have trouble getting a straight horizon line, use the V key, V as in Victor, and just sample the, just click on the edge of one edge and then pull over to the the other edge and then let it go and you'll create a nice uh, straight line okay and then that gives you a good opportunity to just get uh, started and to continue painting into your piece here um, we'll want to put in um, another area of trees and also some mountains. So what I think I'd like to do here is use the same brush and I am going to start that 
second mountain right about here and just again it's kind of this up and down motion these are mountains that you would probably see in the Alps so they're gonna be really nice and tall and I'm just gonna let that mountain come right over these existing uh, the existing background mountains so you start all of a sudden to create um, a little bit of depth in your painting right way, right away. I might let that even come up a little bit higher. And then I'm going to switch back over to that majestic mountain brush and again I'm going to use a nice dark value here and with nice firm pressure I'm just going to go ahead and once again dig into it and create some texture in that mountain. And remember that once we do this, get this in, then we can go back and have some fun with texture. I'm even going to let another little mountain range kind of start in right in here. Let's show some difference in value right away. So this will be maybe our snow covered side of the mountain. Take that up a little bit higher. You can do whatever you want with these mountains. Put in as many as you want and just have fun with it. I'm going to use this brush with kind of firm pressure here and just kind of create the look of some trees going along the edge of the lake. A little darker value. And you'll see we'll do some blending on this as well. You could do this or not. You don't have to do this. I'm going to use that same majestic mountain brush and just form this mountain a little more. Put another mountain right down here and get some white here and get some nice snow on this mountain here and we'll stick with that dark side being on the left something like that. And again, this time we'll go back to our snowdrift blenders and we're going to blend our mountains. And again, as you blend this, let that color come right down into where our lake is going to be. Remember you can always go back and do these do additional detail work here. So just pull that color right down into the lake. Even from the 
horizon that you've set here. Soft blending. Watch the size of your brush. Remember to do the job that you need with the size brush that it demands. Pull that right down. And once you get a lot of this blended out and you like what's going on, do some go back into this with majestic mountain and do some darker values here Using the Frozen Lake brush, you'll want to sample a darker color, and what I will tend to do is go to the darkest color that I used in the mountains, and then go to a little bit lighter version of that to use for your water. And um, you'll just want to create some long strokes um, across the horizon that we set up previously. And then you can also dig into the shoreline a little bit and create some little areas like little coves and whatnot um, which is always a nice effect to add. You can see how I'm doing that here and then continue to sample the color making sure that you stay within that color source and keep this uh, area of light, um, somewhat light in your painting. Um, it's always nice to have a little bit of reflective quality coming through here, but let's keep the edges a little bit darker and uh, then keep this center area nice and soft and we can use our blender when we want to go back into this. Again, this brush, Frozen Lake, is a good one for using just to um, you know, enhance your details and continue painting into your mountains. So you'll want to do that towards the end of the painting um, you know, when you want to establish uh, more detail. Now we're going to begin uh, with another brush here called the Majestic Fur Brush and we're going to use that brush to create some little distant trees in the background here and you can do that on a new layer if you're feeling a little bit insecure um, just go ahead and add a few trees onto the shoreline here And I, I tend to like to use this brush because of the fact that um, and tend to use it on a layer because that way I can control the opacity if I feel like I've gone too far. This brush has a little rotation with it as well so you can use it in different orientations. And maybe we'll add some right over here too. These are distant trees, so we don't have to make them real detailed. And 
And as we move into the foreground area, I'll show you a little bit more on how to use this brush. Now when you have trees such as this on the shoreline, you will tend to have some reflections in the water. So for that brush we would again use the Snowdrift Blender and we'll just pull that color right into the water very softly in a vertical uh, orientation and then we'll go back over it and we'll bring the opacity down on that a little bit too. Hmm. We'll push those clouds, we'll push those trees into the distance by just softly blending over the top of them too, just to soften them a bit. You'll notice how the value of the trees is reduced and they appear to recede back. A very soft pressure will, will achieve that for you. I'm going to go back to Frozen Lake here and define this shoreline just a little bit further. Okay, now let's move into the foreground area and we're going to pick up our Majestic Furs brush and we're going to start to put in some of our fir trees here. And this brush is a lot of fun to work with and basically these trees are going to paint themselves for you. Um, it's just a kind of a back and forth motion with it, just a quick this tree I'm going to have maybe lots of expression with it and tilting a little bit. You can put that tree in wherever you want and and we're going to build up this foreground area so it's not real important that you go all the way to the bottom with the tree. Little smaller brush tip and we'll do the details at the top of the tree. And then to add some snow, pick a lighter color and just go over the very tops of the tree. You may want to put a little more snowfall on one side of the tree, such as the right hand side, to stay consistent with the rest of the painting. And we'll maybe add another tree here. Just let those branches come right on down. Maybe one right here.
little smaller brush tip, remember to do your detail work. And snow again. And with these uh, also, once I've done this set of trees, I again like to do the Snow Drifts Blender and just pull those edges down, just soften those edges a little bit. Because we're actually going to be building up some more trees right in this area. We're going to choose the brush called Winter Foliage now and with a nice light color we're going to use that to start building in the look of some foliage right in this foreground area here. Um, I was going to suggest that uh, a good idea is to start with a darker value with these um, with the foliage and this is just a matter of uh, tapping take that foliage right. Watch your brush size. You can go a little bit smaller as you go down to the edge of the lake. And then pick up the lighter color, the white, to show the little bits of snow on the foliage as well. That creates a nice contrast in color. And we're going to do the same over here. We'll start with a darker value, come out at the corner, and just create that little area of foliage right in here. And then you can use a, another value, just get it. A good variety of values going with your foliage. Now we're going to choose the Snowdrift Splendor again, and we're going to use that to create. I'm going to use a little smaller brush here and just drag out this area to create that feeling of a little bit of a land mass and um, edge along our ground cover there. And here we're going to pick up another brush called Snow Frost. And we'll reset that tool. And we're going to use that brush to just add a little bit of frosty 
look up in this foliage here. Let's just soften it a little bit. We really want this to be a cold winter scene. And this is a good brush to do that with. Choose the Snowdrift Blender next and go ahead and blend down. And what we want to do here is create the look of a of you know an area that's been opened up with snow. And this is actually where we're going to put our little house. And this will blend really nicely and give you that really uh, that look of snow drifts which is gives you a nice effect. Now on the majestic furs on this side we need a little more balance on this side of the painting so we're going to go with uh, by adding some more or additional trees over here and again you can just use your beautiful majestic fur brush to paint in some fir trees and this brush really paints your fir trees for you just quick little dabs of the brush and you're going to get really a nice effect here. And then when you add the snowfall over the top, you'll have some beautiful trees. And we'll let that tree come right down onto this landmass we've created here. And we're going to pick up a new brush called Pines. And again, we'll be working with a very dark value and use that to create the look of some pine trees coming up. And I like to approach this brush by pulling up, pulling from the bottom up. And it gives you a nice effect. Really a nice brush for creating pine trees. We'll add a few in here. And we'll go back to the majestic firs and let's put some snow on those mountains. Use our alt key to sample lighter color. A snow on the tree. And of course you could go in here and actually put in some more trees, more firs, whatever you want to do. Let's go ahead and add our little cabin now. A good way to start with your little cabin is to simply do a little V shape like this and then pull back another little line here 
connect that line, and then give that cottage or that little cabin a little bit of character. And you don't need to make these lines straight here. Just give it a little bit of a slope to it. And I think you'll like that effect. Pick up white. using your alt key and then we'll paint our roof in and we'll make sure that that roof is nice and snow covered and then there's going to be a little snow on the top of this ledge as well top of the roof and then we'll use a darker color on our sides of our cabin. And we'll just fill that in. In landscape painting, a lot of times um, the uprights are what we call buildings, mountains, and trees will be our darkest value. So we'll go ahead and follow through with that in this painting. Just a simple little cabin. Go maybe a little lighter here. And we'll give it our cabin a little door. Maybe texturize it a bit. Give it the look of some wood planks on the side. And then we'll go back to our Snowdrift Blender, little smaller brush size, and blend out these edges here. First, we're going to go ahead and drop this. I like then going and adding some more foliage, so we'll pick up the winter foliage brush and put some foliage around our little cottage, little cabin in the woods. Let's even take our majestic furs again and put in another fur tree, maybe right about here. some snow finally um, it comes down to thinking about you know what are the extra details you want to add to your painting you want to put in a few more trees on the cabin. Maybe use your winter foliage 
and fill in this area a little bit more with foliage. We'll take our frozen lake brush and use a little darker value here. And let's create like a little pathway through the snow. And again, this gives you the opportunity to go back in, add your final details. Um, and then the last brush we're going to use, and this is always fun, is to add some snow. And this brush is called Snowfall. And um, we'll use this with a light color, of course. And um, it's always good to show Snowfall over your darker values, because this is typically how you would see it. Um, falling from the sky. We don't tend to see it until we look in areas where things are darker because a lot of times the snow will actually blend right into the, um, the atmospheric conditions that you see around you. So little darker values, uh, go ahead and put that snowfall over so you can really see it. And that adds that nice finishing touch to your painting. So go on, uh, continue to build the painting the way you would like to build it. Uh, go and develop your mountains and add a little more texture. Um, you know, I can see things, you know, as I, I, I always, as I'm doing this, I always see things that I want to add. Um, frozen lake and maybe I want to add maybe the look of a trunk in here some of these trees or maybe just some trunks coming up in the background here I probably would spend a lot more time going back into my mountains, adding some more details to enhance your overall painting as well. So I think this is a good set that will get you started. Um, shades of gray for essential. So thank you for joining me today for another Paint Like Bob Ross session, and I hope you enjoy this video, and take care.